Good evening and welcome to the USD 231 Activity Complex at Gardner Edgerton High School. Tonight's High B High School Game of the Week. Sunflower Conference football and two undefeated teams as Olathe North on the road taking on Gardner Edgerton. Hi everybody, Kevin Wyke along with Johnny Beck, Bethany Bowman will be our sideline reporter and what a win last week for Gardner Edgerton as they smoked Mill Valley 49 to 10 but Lane in the weeds, Olathe North still undefeated, number two against number one, a lot on the line tonight. Yeah, league title, both teams coming in 4-0. We know both these teams explosive on the offensive side. They're going to both try and establish the run 70%, but you got to watch out for the passing game for Gardner. Time now for the high B player profile, T.J. Porter, another great Olathe North running back. All-state kid. This kid does a lot on the ground, over 400 yards, six touchdowns, but also catches passes coming out of the backfield, so he's, so he's a dual-threat guy. And for Gardner Edgerton, this wide receiver had a big game against Mill Valley last week. Three touchdowns, all over 40 yards. This guy's got six TDs on the year, averaging over 30 yards per catch. He's a big-time home run hitter down the field each time. Explosive players on both sides, one versus two. It's the High V High School Game of the Week here on Spectrum News. And we're back with the opening kickoff right after this. Homecoming night here at Gardner Edgerton High School as the Eagles taking the field. The Emerald City is the theme here at Gardner Edgerton High School. Of course, that's from the Wizard of Oz. And this uh, Gardner Edgerton team off to a 4 0 start, taking on 4 0 Olathe North in a Sunflower Conference matchup. Big ramifications as far as the conference and maybe a, a playoff game later in the year. You win this game tonight, you'll have home field in the playoffs. So that's on the mind of these players and coaches. But uh, Gardner Edgerton came so close last year, Johnny, the uh, double overtime loss to Manhattan. You know they've got a chip on their shoulder coming into this 2023 season. Yeah, and a lot of young guys that, you know, got really good experience going deep into the playoffs. So these guys are hungry, like you said, and ready to get back. But we know the mentality of this coaching staff. They're going to take it one week at a time. Chris McCartney, head coach of Olathe North in his ninth year. This guy's a lifer at Olathe North. 28th year at the high school. He was the coach of the year in the Sunflower Conference in 2022. He's been an assistant under Gene Weir, John McCall, and Pete Flood. And he's been involved in those eight state titles the Eagles have won. Terry Kinney is your white hat. 
for the opening coin toss with the captains. Olathe well, North has won the toss. They elect to defer and will kick towards the flag. So the Eagles will kick off. Wins over Olathe East, Shawnee Mission Northwest, Shawnee Mission North, and Shawnee Mission South. And there is Jesse Owen. The odd part about this is he was a star at Olathe North. This guy was a stud running back for uh, Gene Weir and the Eagles back in his high school days and went on to Pittsburgh State. He was the Kansas City Chiefs Coach of the Week. Congratulations to Coach Owen as they again crushed Mill Valley at Mill Valley 49-10 last week. So congratulations to the uh, Gardner Edgerton coaching staff. And Jesse got a pair of Oakleys, a Super Bowl coin, and a $5 grant from the uh, Hunt Foundation for his high school. Last three wins in this series, won by Olathe North. But if you talk to Olathe North head coach, Coach McCartney, he says that doesn't matter. Different teams, different year, but They've won three straight, including last year, 13 to two. That game was at ODAC. And the Eagles will send it down the field. And it'll be a touchback. And let's check in with the sideline reporter. Here's Bethany Bowman. Yeah, guys, thank you. A battle of unbeaten tonight as both teams enter the season 4-0, and enter this game 4-0. and And, of course, Olathe North, a high-powered offense, averaging 48 points per game, but the Gardner-Edgerton defense is allowed to 17 points all season. The question is, which side of the ball will shine here tonight? Talking to both head coaches this week, one similar key matchup for them, discipline, and each coach had high praise for the other. It should be a good one here tonight. Thanks, Bethany. Braven Powell, the junior at quarterback, Flexbone. They'll run it about 70% of the time. They'll hit it with their fullback up the middle. This is Sire Padilla. And Sire is a, a sophomore, speedy sophomore at 47 yards. And a touchdown uh, against Mill Valley. That was a 47-yard uh, touchdown run, showing off his speed. Nice gain of about four yards on the first down run. This time he shut down. Good job by the uh, defensive line. Gunderson down low, the Mike linebacker. Looked like he had the first contact, only a gain of one. There is Powell. Four touchdown passes and had a 51-yard touchdown run in that win at Mill Valley, 49-10. to He also threw his first interception of the year. Probably thinking about that more than all the touchdowns he put up on the board. Now third down, and it's going to be a long four. First drive of the game for the Trailblazers. Fake the toss, Powell under pressure, and using his speed, taking off up the field across the 40 for a first down run. And it looked like Caleb Taylor had kind of set the edge, but go back to the replay here, you see Powell just fast enough to get to the edge there and outrun those defenders and pick up a first down. Good job down the field blocking by those Gardner Edgerton wide receivers. 16 yards first down run. Braven Powell, the junior. Also a basketball player, excellent in the classroom. And here's Padilla. Now we talk about his speed, but he is a powerful back. Got up near midfield on that run. If you're not familiar with this offense, Johnny, they got a couple of wings that line up on the edge of the offensive line and then the fullback is probably their most uh, highly touched guy. I mean, he's going to get more touches than anybody. Number 20 there, Sire Padilla. There you see they have those two guys lining up, Butash and Grant Ellis. And they'll give it off to Padilla and he is stopped on the play. Nice play there by Nate Gunderson. Brother Alex played on the team last year now at Highland Community College. And Gunderson just goes down low and able to slip in here and stop Padilla. Yeah, that's what these linebackers are going to have to do. They're going to have to key in on their guys and make sure that they're not over pursuing. She talked about this offense is really hard to prepare for during the week. And they keep the ball away from you on third down and one. Ball is loose. And let's see, Olathe North saying they have it. 
Let's wait for the official signal. Olathe North has recovered. So a big play for the visitors as recovering the football, Caleb Taylor for the Eagles. It looked like Padilla had picked up that first down and we'll have to see here. It didn't look like the quarterback running back exchange wasn't very clean and first contact that ball pops out, but huge break for Olathe North. Jumping on that ball, coming out of the pile, the turnover. Eagle offense out there. Everybody's been ballyhooing the Gardner Edgerton averaging 48 points per game. This Olathe North offense averaging 48 points per game. And this is Aiden Bruce on a first down run, spinning inside the 35 yard line. So a great first down run. We'll see Bruce and T.J. Porter, but blocking on the edge, Johnny. Yeah, and they've got some big guys up front. You see them hat on a hat, staying with their guy down the field. We know what Bruce can do in the open field. Swing it out, and this is a, the youngster, Sam Simmons. And he is close to another first down, a gain of nine. Simmons only a sophomore, an electric basketball player, but very good wide receiver, and his dad not too bad a player back in the day at Schlegel and Northwestern Sam Simmons Sr. Second down and short. Eagles like to play fast. This is Jamo Sarver. Birth name is Jamison. He likes to go by Jamo. We'll also see Miller Jones, but he's been very good thus far this year. 80% completion rate for Jamo, the junior. And this Olathe North has a ton of options on this offensive side, so. We're going to be calling a lot of different guys' names. And J-Mo calling his own number. J-Mo high step in his way inside the 20 and near the 17-yard line, a gain of about eight. This offensive line led by Braden Hales on the left side. He's the uh, Division I prospect at left tackle. And I'm sure they heard all week about how good this Gardner-Edgerton defensive line is, and they're probably one of the best in the States, but... You've got to find a way to motivate your guys, and looks like these guys up front have came out ready to play. Anthony mentioned they've only given up 17 points on the year, averaging four points per game. Flag is down on this running play by the Eagles as Bruce getting the early touches. Of course, uh, his brother is Arlen Bruce, playing at Oklahoma State now. Holding on the offense. It's a 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay the down. Yeah, and what you didn't want is a late the north is a penalty that's going to put you back now 10 yards. We'll get the left guard Spencer with the holding call. Spencer the senior along with Pride, Alamari and Enright along with Hales. This is a good offensive line. Sarver, screen pass, Bruce, one on one, makes the guy miss. Bruce, a great spin. And then he's going to be wrapped up by Eli Porter, who usually doesn't miss. As fans uh, wanting a flag there is a little extra at the end, but nice catch and run by Aiden Bruce. Well, when you talk about this Gardner Edgerton defense, pride themselves on making the first tackle, but these Olathe North still players, man, they're really tough to bring down. And again, you see Bruce picking up those extra yards, making it a more manageable third down situation here for Olathe North. Still third down and long. Sarver rolling short side, throwing, and the pass incomplete. Off the receiver's hands right near the first down stake. Cole Smither, the junior, couldn't hang on, and it's fourth down, and we've got a flag down. It's going to be against Gardner Edgerton. Holding on the defense. It's a 10 yard penalty. It will be first down. So that is a tough penalty if you're Gardner Edgerton. Brian McCall is their defensive coordinator. Again, another Olathe North kid. Coach there and won a state title as a quarterback, so all the connections are there in this matchup. First and 10 from the 23. 
or I uh, beg your pardon, from the 13, as we got a uh, flag down. So some early flags. Holding on the offense. 10 yard penalty, replay the down. Well, Hale's getting flagged again, uh, Johnny. I mean, he's going up against a very good defensive end in Spencer Easley, but well, all Hales with... is the big, not big time guy. I mean, getting offers from Colorado State, South Dakota, the military academies. Got to keep those feet moving, you know. You got to set that foundation. Every time you're reaching those arms out, those referees are going to call it. The penalties in the red zone are a killer, and Sarver not going to get to the edge and we've got another flag down as Cam Porter came up and made the stop from the secondary. Holding on the defense. It's a 10 yard penalty. First down. Well, we've seen two defensive holding penalties and that's the stun look on the Gardner Edgerton coaching staff face. Well, Lathan North must have saw something on tape and let the referees know. Uh, they switched it now. Again, you see those arms just holding on to the blue jersey. Yeah, right that's Sam the Simmons, the sophomore, yeah. So once again, the Penalty was changed to offensive holding, and the Eagles were driving into the red zone, and now the penalty flag is killing them. As they'll keep it on the ground, not much doing to the 31-yard line. That was Blaze Adger getting some early touches. Second down in a country mile. Sarver to throw and the pass. Deflected, intercepted. Going back the other way is Chase Bojanski with his third interception of the year. He leads the Trailblazers in that category. Turnovers now even at one apiece. And they're going to tack on an extra 15 yards for the late hit out of bounds. Go back to that interception. Dropping eight guys back into coverage. You see the linebacker able to get a hand. No, the wide receiver just tips it up. Bojanski's in the right spot, right time. And see here at the end of the play, outside the white lines, they're going to throw that flag. Well, this is the old tip drill, and Bojanski right there. On the defense. 15 yard tack on penalty, and Gardner Edgerton in business with the short field. In this defense, All day, baby. four All points day. per All game day. allowed, two shutouts, eight takeaways, but still zero in turnover ratio because their offense has had seven fumbles. Well, now they're plus one, and now here's Padilla. A powerful run inside the 25. Sire Padilla. And again, it's nothing special up front. You just get these guys up front of chance to kind of move the line of scrimmage and Padilla is able to find a little running space like you talked about he runs hard in between those tackles picking up those extra yards first down for Gardner he's averaging 5.4 yards per carry but he's one of the fastest guys on the team at 4-6 he's blown up here a lot of penetration there by the Olathe North Eagles as Amare Musau and uh, Daniel Van. Daniel Van, they've really talked, raved about this guy being their most improved player. 280 pounds senior. Went from, uh, you know, a guy that was just a decent high school player. Now he's a college prospect. And Chris McCartney, the head coach, is their defensive coordinator. They're allowing 24 points per game. Second down and 10. Pitch short side, Padilla. And Gunderson, the Mike linebacker, rides him out. 
Gunderson, one of their uh, top tacklers. Well, that's one of the things I think this Olathe North has a strength on. They've got speed to get to the outside, so they're able to stretch those option plays out. I think Gardner's going to have more success staying in between the tackles. Well, this is what you want if you're Olathe North. Get this team behind the sticks a little bit, but Gardner Edgerton, probably the most proficient flex bone passing team if they need it. And now the ball on the field again. And it's covered up by Olathe North. Two turnovers. And this one is going to be covered up by Andrew Yarnell. So bad ball handling by the Blazers early on. And that's a second turnover on a promising drive. Again, you see Powell. Not sure if he wanted to hand it off or not. But again, it's that quarterback running back exchange, that mesh point. Latham North season another opportunity to stop Gardner Edgerton. So eight well, turnovers, I mean eight fumbles lost, I beg your pardon, and one interception. So they've had nine, they've had eight takeaways. They're actually uh, in the minus category and this team's number one in the state. And here's Sarver and he is whipped down. Saviston, the uh, linebacker, top tackler on the team. And he plays the Mike position, and he's going to get a lot of tackles. Number 45 in blue. You see the penetration right there, just shoots the gap. And you're able to get these Olathe North skill players down. First contact, going to have a lot of success. It's when these guys get in the open field, they become dangerous. Second down and long, second down at 14. Sarver to throw, pass broken up. Diving at the ball, Randy Singleton. Now, I don't know if he touched it, but he. Definitely got in the uh, way of it. Maybe uh, shielded the eyes of the receiver there. Let's see if he got his hands on this guy. Yeah, better throw this time by Sarver. Either way, you know, he, he got enough of, of a distraction, but you, know, you look at Singleton in that defensive backfield. I mean, he's watching these guys run the routes. He almost knows when they're gonna break and what an asset to have on the defensive side of the ball. Timeout, Gardner Edgerton. And third down and 14. Timeout, Gardner Edgerton. Lathan North scrimmaging at their own 15 yard line. Four and a half to play in your first quarter. Sunflower Conference action. Kevin White, Bethany Bowman, and Johnny Beck here in Gardner on a homecoming night. Gardner Edgerton High School. Temperature's definitely warm and windy. Temperature's in the, still in the upper 80s. Wind strong out of the south. Latha North has the wind at their back. It's just interesting, Johnny, to see so many Olathe North former coaches and former players. Spencer Webb on the Gardner Edgerton staff. He was a kicker for the Eagles. Ryan Lonergan, coach at Olathe North. Travis Greer, Leon Washington, of course, Jesse Owen and Brian McCall were stars there. Now facing off against the Eagles in a number one in 6A versus number two in 6A matchup. And fans really making a lot of noise on the home side on third down and long. Motion by Simmons. They fake the push pass, throw down the field, and it is caught by Bruce. What a catch! A one handed catch by Aiden Bruce. First down, what a play by Aiden Bruce here. Yeah, good job up front to give Sarver time to get that throw off and makes a heck of a throw, but that's a top 10 catch right there by Bruce. Spotted at the 40, it's gonna be 25 yards. And let's go back uh, again, what a play and just getting under this and getting his uh, right hand on the ball. Yeah, third and 14 down in deep into your own territory. Huge pickup, but you want to talk about a big time play right there, being able to track that ball and haul it in. And the Eagles, second down and 10. And we'll see Bruce, so we have not yet seen TJ Porter in this game. So Bruce getting the early carries. Two-headed monster with Bruce and Porter. 
Both are very good running backs. Now third down and five after the five-yard gain by Aiden Bruce. An excellent basketball player. Excellent in the classroom as well. Third down and five. Pass deep down the field. Bruce cut off the route, and it sails long and incomplete. Singleton had the coverage and maybe the best chance at the football. Now fourth down and five Eagles. Yeah, it just looked like quarterback and wide receiver not on the same page there. Wide receiver kind of broke that route down right at the sticks. Sarver ends up throwing a deep ball. Got a manageable fourth down situation here, fourth and five. Sarver can punt. And he will quick kick this down the field. Nobody back for Gardner Edgerton. And wow, talk about a coffin corner special by Jamo. Inside the five, they're spotting it, it looks like near the two on a 53 yard punt. So we got distance and accuracy here. The quarterback for Olathe North, a star punter. Well, it's always a luxury to have a quarterback that can do that because you're going to keep the defense in their base defense. And right there, nobody back deep. It's a way to flip the field right there if you're Olathe North. Backed up in the shadow of their own goalpost. Gardner Edgerton already two turnovers in the first quarter. Have to avoid a safety as they officially spot it at the one yard line. And this will be the quarterback. And a nice run by Braven Powell out near the spot it uh, officially at the nine yard line. And a nice gain. Got some uh, breathing room with an eight-yard run. Braven Powell. Of course, the offensive coordinator is Dustin Delaney, the former Shawnee Mission East head coach. Led them to a state championship back in 2014 and a state runner-up. Big for the Lancers. And this is his offense. Running play. Fullback, not much, but didn't need much, and he'll get the uh, first down, and now Padilla is shaken up. Looks like he's going to limp off. Now, last year was Dawson Kindler, but now Dawson is playing one of their uh, important linebacker positions, so let's see if they... Uh, let's see what happened here, Johnny. I think his uh, knee took a pounding here from the Eagles. He got dog piled there. First and ten. Nice running play. So the flex bone, uh, Johnny, is a lot of deception. I've talked to a lot of uh, defenses. It's, that was a quarterback run for Braven Powell. They just—you have to be assignment sound. You can't go for all the fakes, and you really have to tackle well. And hopefully, you can get them behind the sticks. And if they're willing to put it on the ground twice for you, you'll take that as well. Well, that's, you know, what you're, you're feasting on, right, is trying to create turnovers. It's, it's a really hard offense to prepare for during the season is, you know, you're having your scout, scout team try and run an offense that they're not normally being able to run. But, yeah, just going back to being assignment sound, got to make sure that you're playing your gaps and you're reading your keys because these guys run a lot of fakes off of the quick dives and you got to be in your spot or else that's when they hit the big play down the field. Last run by Nemo Snipe, who's in there with Padilla out, shaken up. And here's Nemo to the edge. Nemo's a speedster himself. And Nemo takes a hard shot there after a, he got some good yardage for a first down run as uh, Jeremiah Rhodes, and he had a car collision out on the uh, bench area, in front of Gardner Edgerton's bench area here. Boom. You see it right in front of the camera there. Wow. It is a first down, new set of downs, first and 10. Under a minute to play in your first quarter. Trailblazers, two turnovers on their first two drives. Pass down the field, and they have their man, Colton Hawkinson, behind the defense. Forget about it. Touchdown, Trailblazers. Seventy-four yards. Hawkinson with his 
third touchdown catch of the year. Had a catch last week against Mill Valley. And Colton will stay in and be the holder for Ashton Adrian, the soccer player slash football player and also homecoming King candidate. And he hooks it and caught it just inside the left upright. So the big pass play with this flex bone, Johnny, this team really throws it well. And Hawkinson got behind the defense and made the Eagles pay. Well, when you run the ball as much as they do, you start to cheat up a little bit. And these guys are fast enough to get behind that second and third level. And you see right there the breakaway speed. But, you know, that's why it's so important that these guys run all their fakes out because coach is just sitting over there saying, okay, these guys are creeping up, creeping up, creeping up. A great pass by Powell over the top. Finished by Hawkinson in the end zone. Gardner Edgerton puts the first points of the board on the night. Honorable mention all league last year. Looking like a first team all league player this year he is Hawkinson. Also plays basketball at the school. Six plays, 99 yards. And the 74 yard completion to Hawkinson. Once again, his third touchdown of the season. Tenth touchdown pass for Braven Powell. Aiden Bruce deep back. Waiting for the kick from Adrian of Gardner Edgerton. On the return from inside the five yard line. And flag is down as Cole Smither on the nice return. And Johnny says this one's coming back with a Latham North holding penalty. I think they've got two holding penalties on either side of the field. Holding on the offense. It's a 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay that first down. Cut. Yeah, not sure who the gunner was on that side for Gardner Edgerton, but he was flying down the field, and I think it surprised the Olathe North blockers. Almost ran right by him and just kind of grabbed a little bit of that jersey right in front of the referee, and I think everybody in the stands knew it was coming as well. So the Eagles will get backed up after a good return by uh, Smither. J-Mo has thrown one interception. His teams have been moving the ball. Penalties have hurt both teams, especially that first drive for Olathe North. As they were in the red zone and then through the interception. They start deep in their own territory, and Sarver is taken down after a short gain. As it Caleb Dewey there. Dewey plays a cat linebacker. He's kind of a safety slash uh, linebacker, but this guy makes a lot of tackles, number 23 in blue. And you see him work downhill. Just trying to make the fundamental tackle, just going for the legs of Sarver. Picking up a minimal gain there on first down. Only a gain of one. The Eagles don't look like they want to snap it. And that's the end of the first quarter. Sunflower Conference football in the Hy-Vee High School game of the week. After one, the home team by a touchdown.
Ready for the start of the second quarter. Late the North backed up deep in their own territory. Penalty on the kickoff facing second down and nine. And here is their quarterback Sarver and he is whipped down. And this is Spencer Easley and when I talk to other coaches in the city they say this guy is the most underrated guy on their defensive line. He is a playmaker number 27. Well, you see right there not biting on the counter step. Able to make a tackle for loss forcing Olathe North into a long third and ten situation here. Third leading tackler definitely a college prospect pass over the middle and incomplete. As went off the receiver's hands there and just that was um, I think that was Valdez. Yeah Vincent Valdez and the Sarver took a big hit after he released the ball and it was high and Sarver slow to come off the field. Now he's probably saying I got to stand here and punt the ball <laughs> on fourth down and ten. Watch this shot he took. Yeah. Valdez the tight end. Uh, pass was a little high but got both hands on it. Yeah that would have been. Uh, yeah. I think yeah that's right, easily. Right in the uh, bread basket. The quarterback got hit, but uh, Valdez got both hands on it. And I'm sure, if you ask him, he'd probably say, I should have caught that. Now Sarver leaves the field, so. Who is now the uh, punter for Olathe North? Well, they've got 11 guys on the field, and I don't see anybody taking. I was told uh, Valdez. Yep, yeah, is, is. yeah, Valdez is the. Uh, Next guy up as far as punting, and it looks like Valdez is moving back near the goal line. And he will punt it away, the senior. And he drops it. And now he's in trouble in the end zone. And it's a defensive touchdown for the big guy. Isaiah Williams, right place, right time for the junior. And the defense putting six on the board now for the Blazers. Critical special teams air by the Eagles deep in their own territory. Their backup punters in. He puts it on the ground. And the Blazers take advantage with an easy defensive touchdown. As Adrian in for the PATs, one for one on PATs. And it is up and good. 14 0. Home team. And it can't get any easier, Johnny, for big Isaiah on this one. Yeah, tough series there for Olathe North as Valdez drops the third down. Looked like it was going to be a first down and then gets thrusted in to be the punter and just kind of muffs it there. You can see his eyes down the field rather than looking that ball into his hands. And <laughs> yeah, like you said, no easier touchdown for Williams, but you know, it's awesome to see those big guys score as they put so much hard work in up front and usually aren't the guys we talk about. So good to see him get a touchdown and celebrate with all of his teammates. Give an assist to Mark Dibiak, the Sam linebacker. He made contact on Valdez after Valdez was trying to scoop it off the turf. Dibiak, the interesting connection there. His dad was a star at Olathe North. And of course, his dad won a... Buck Buchanan or Jeff but he's a friend of Jesse Owen and he wants his son to play for Jesse and Jesse uh, says we'll gladly take Mark and Mark made a big play as there's Smith or deep back for the kick return but now the Eagles in a bit of trouble down by two touchdowns on the road and once again the wind out of the south pretty strong still Temperatures slowly moving down into the low 80s. It was hot. Before kickoff, it was in the upper 80s. And the wind at the back of the kicker, you can forget about a return here. And the Eagles will start first and 10 from their 20. Now let's see if we see some new faces like Miller Jones. Yeah, number three may get some touches at quarterback. Miller Jones 
is the uh, transfer from uh, Blue Valley North, and there's the wind out of the south. And typically the wind will die down as the night goes on, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. But we've seen Miller Jones out there lined up at, at wide out, so it's not going to be his first snaps of the game if he does come in as the QB. No, nope, looks like Sarver is the quarterback, so... Yeah, Jones is a uh, wide receiver, defensive back, and the backup quarterback. And now J-Mo and the offense out there trailing by two touchdowns. And uh, this play by the quarterback, getting about four yards. The fans <laughs> thought the uh, running back was thrown for a, a big loss, but uh, good ball handling by J-Mo faked uh, the crowd out on their homecoming night. And, Able to get four. Yeah, for, fortunate for Adger that he did not receive that hand. Yeah, Adger was like, yeah, I'm glad I didn't. Blown up in the backfield. There's the Eagles facing second down and six. And Sarver meet Mark Dibiak. And once again, He's a kid that grew up cheering for Olathe North because his dad was a star at Olathe North, now playing for Gardner Edgerton, the Sam linebacker. Yeah, you see him setting the edge there, just blowing that play up. Adger really did not have an option but to just try and stay on his feet. But that's you're going to teach a kid how to set an edge. That's how you're going to do it right there. So now third down and eight Eagles. Throwing it about 70, or I'm running about 70% of the time. Throwing it about 30% of the time. And now we're going to get a, a timeout for Gardner timeout. Edgerton. Timeout Gardner, Gardner Edgerton. That's their second. Well, Johnny, if you can't get in the mood for Halloween and look at that moon that's above the visiting stands there, it looks like a pumpkin above the uh, visiting stands. Wow, that is a uh, rocking moon there, ladies and gentlemen. Not sure if that's an orange moon or a yellow moon. Well, I'm colorblind, so yeah, well, take your the, choice. It has there. a name, though. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah, pretty sure. Oh, you're going to get fancy and lunar on me here, huh? Wow. Take a deep dive into astronomy. Is that what it is? I don't know. <laughs> I do know there's a, an eclipse coming up. Okay. October 14th. All right. So. I'll try not to look at it. It's it's only a half one. So oh, okay. You just have to get those 3D glasses that they wow. give out. And all right. I think it's on a Saturday, so. Wow, free. All right, there's Brian McCall, the defensive coordinator with the long blonde hair. He was a star quarterback at Olathe North, so all the connections. These guys on the Gardner sideline, uh, the former Olathe North players. Third down and long. And this is Sarver hit as he throws, pass to the sideline, incomplete, as it was intended for Smither, and he couldn't reel it in. And it'll be a quick three and out for the Eagles, trailing by two touchdowns in the second quarter. I think Sarver takes another hit here. Yeah, at he's the getting end. hit. And that pass sailed wide, and Cole made a diving attempt. Now Sarver will stand to punt after that disaster last time when he wasn't on the field. The backup hunter puts it on the carpet and ends up for a special teams. Now, wait a minute, John. Is that a special teams or defensive touchdown? That's a special teams touchdown. After the punt near midfield by uh, Sarver. And this one will be 32 yards, no return. But Slow start for the uh, Blazers. Two early turnovers. Then they hit the long pass. Then get the defensive slash special team score. And this team... Uh, I guess the question all week was, how do you handle success? You go to Mill Valley, four-time defending 5A state champs, and just blow them out. How do you uh, handle that with everybody uh, congratulating you and saying uh, you guys are the best? Uh, handling success, always an interesting uh, situation, and Gardner Edgerton looks like they're uh, Dealing with it pretty well. Here's Braven Powell, the quarterback, running for a nice gain. Seven yards on this first down run. Well, I think when you make a deep run in, into the playoffs like they did last year, you know, they, they've got kind of that bad taste in their mouth, and, you know, they're not going to take any game for granted as they want to set up their playoff run as easy as they can. 
Powell, five-step drop, and now he's hit. I think the ball bounced right back to him, and he recovered his own fumble, but like the defensive lineman poked it free, and Braven got the uh, room service hop here. Well, Singleton was on a Yarnell double. Yarnell was the guy that knocked it out, Johnny, sorry. And Singleton was on a double move, but the defensive back down here for Olathe North wasn't allowing it, and I think that forced Powell to kind of tuck and run, but Olathe North right there with the big hit. Now third down and five, and this running play to a Snipe, and he's not gonna have enough. Nemo's been playing since we saw Padilla. A bunch of Eagle players kind of fall on his knee, and it's going to be fourth down and still two now for the Blazers. Gunderson, another tackle. He's going to lead the Eagles and tackles the Mike linebacker. He and Vasquez and Musau and you know, top tacklers on this Eagles team. And now quarterback keeping on fourth down. And boy, I don't think he got it. The ball handling was a problem, and then he wasn't able to really get much running room. And now they say they gave it to him. Wow. Boy, from the side angle view here, I, I'd like to see a measurement, but apparently it's uh, good here. And now the Eagles are want to see a measurement too, I believe. Well, you see the fake there, and he kind of bounced the ball off the running back's helmet and almost lost the ball again, but... All right, well, let's, uh, Bethany, you got the uh, close-up view here. I didn't think he got it. Yeah, I don't know, guys. That's a, that's a really tough one. It did not look like he got that one, if I'm being really honest. Uh, I think we need the uh, NFL replay, the yellow line pulled out for this. I don't think they have that here at the high school level. But uh, Kevin and uh, Johnny, I don't know. You guys have a good view up there? Well, where they spot it, they're going to give it to them, but not sure the spot was correct. Uh, they're short. Oh, wow. So, uh, well, if you haven't noticed, we're right next to the Olathe North coaching box. So on the two turnovers and now this fourth down stop, it feels like they're yelling through a paper wall. Well, into our headsets, it's Johnny. It's funny because all the yeah. fans can hear it. And they yeah, there's turn Johnny it there. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, they're enthusiastic and very loud. But that's a big play if you want to stay in this game. I was wondering. I was like, you know, Terry Kenny signal for the first down. And I was like, really? Kind of like if I'm going to the North, want to see a measurement. And they got it. And it was just a few inches short. Eagles take over on downs. Take over at their own 43 yard line. Running play is blown up. As, uh, nothing doing for Aiden Bruce as Mark Debiak uh, playing with a huge chip on his shoulder. Once again, we mentioned his dad was a uh, star at Olathe North, won the Buck Buchanan Award. If you're wondering why he's here at Gardner Edgerton, because his father Jeff is buddies with Jesse Owen. So there's, it's, it's not hard to do the uh, transfer uh, math. Pass to the outside, caught by Bruce, and he is stopped immediately. That's the one thing about the Porters. You got Eli and Cam, they're very sure tacklers, the uh, twins at cornerback for the Blazers. Well, you see there, Bruce able to make the catch, but right as he turns to get upfield, you see Porter right there making the, making the stop. Forward progress, looks like they're gonna give him about three yards, but third and long here for Olathe North. T.J. Porter still has not seen a touch in this ball game. And timeout. that is the third Gardner timeout Edgerton. taken by Gardner Edgerton. So they're out of timeouts. But they lead 14 to nothing. They got a long touchdown pass to Hawkinson. Then got a defensive slash special teams score when Olathe North's punter put the ball on the ground and the ball went in the end zone and was covered up by defensive lineman Isaiah Williams. 14-0 Trailblazers who lost to Olathe North last year 13-2 and I was like 
like, what, what, what was going on there in that ball game? Talking to the coaches, that it was a transition situation for uh, Gardner Edgerton as they were putting Brave and Powell in and really hadn't got their offense set, but they got on a big run, made it all the way to the state championship game, lost in a heartbreaker, two overtimes, went for two against Manhattan, and they were stopped and lost 21 to 20. So now the Eagles out of the Gardner Edgerton timeout, facing third down and eight from the 45-yard line. Empty set. And Sarver throwing low incomplete near midfield. Flag is down in the secondary. As this one, they were looking for Miller Jones. Once again, a flag in the secondary. Holy on the defense. The 10 yard penalty from the previous spot replay third down. It'll be a first down. Look at the top of the screen there. Yeah, just uh, receiver going out and the cornerback just whips him to the turf and that's an easy call. And the yardage results in a first down for Olathe North as they move from the 45 their own to the 45 of Gardner Edgerton. And here's Sarver running short side and man, he takes a hit. This Gardner Edgerton team just flies the ball. Dewey, but also Cam Porter. Man, they will hit you. Yeah, once they make their reads, they're all downhill and, and you see Porter shooting in there, making a play behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of three, a tackle for a loss for Porter, who's a homecoming king candidate. We'll see that at halftime. And the sack by Dawson Kindler, the Will linebacker. And this defense, Johnny, uh, people say it was a small sample size, only averaging four, giving away four points per game. They might be the real deal. Well, and you see Sarver, he's wanting to get the ball downfield, just great coverage. You see Gardner Edgerton up front finish the playoff. And they're forcing a late the North into a long third down situation here. Third down and 17. Pass, gonna be nearly intercepted. Nice break on the ball there by Gardner Edgerton. And that is Darion Williams. And we have a flag down after the play, and this might be an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. And guess what my video that was sent to me by uh, Sean Belden this week? And that will get an earful from Jesse Owen. Well, you make a big time play. And Dead you... ball, unsportsmanlike, on the defense. 15 from there. 15 from there. You make a big time play on defense, you're forcing the other team into a punting situation, and now you're giving them a first free down, or free first down that's something that you know, a team that's going to go deep into state you got to make sure that you're taking care of business inside the whistles once the whistles are done you got to get back to the sideline so he's penalized for the gesture of the incomplete pass because he was gesturing towards the sideline all right so if he was running off the field doing that i don't think they call it but i think because he old did days, it to the actual taunting, visiting sideline right? all right yeah that's a taunting situation and now it leaves Olathe North at fourth down and two. It's not an automatic first down. Eagles going to go for it as they scrimmage at the 37 of Gardner Edgerton. I probably need to read the rule books then because I thought. You thought it was a first down? Coach McCartney going to go for it as Miller Jones is in at quarterback. Running play, Bruce, first down and more. Eight, Bruce breaking free. And Bruce turning and yelling at the defender. And let's see if there's a flag coming down here as Bruce goes 37. And I see no flags on the field. Touchdown, Olathe North. Yeah, you got to be consistent there. It's good run by Aiden Bruce, but they just called taunting on Gardner Edgerton. And I think they're. Yeah, and now a flag a has been tossed, uh, Johnny. 
So fourth down and two, 37 yard touchdown run by Aiden Bruce. Now the officiating crew will uh, talk this over. Officials tonight, part of the Kansas State High School Activities Association, Terry Kenny, Paul Sedler, Steve Moritz, Mark Quant, and David Highfill. Let's see how they sort this out. Well, Johnny, we're on the home side. The Gardner Edgerton fans clearly want a uh, taunting penalty now on Olathe North after Bruce broke free. And uh, as Bruce was chased by the defender, he had words for him. We think after we're not the down touchdown, there. We have a dead ball, unsportsmanlike, on the offense. That'll be on the kickoff. So the touchdown will count, and Olathe North will be penalized on the kickoff, not on the PAT try. Extra point try by the Eagles. PAT is good. There was an unsportsmanlike penalty call. He's up and good. So the penalty will be on the kickoff. So the Eagles are going to be backed up. And he's clearly turning and yelling something to Eli Porter at the end of this run. It's not the uh, Tyreek Hill peace sign, but he's looking like he's saying something to him. Well, and, and what a great run by Aiden Bruce. You know, look at these guys up front. See a lot of those late the North guys staying with their blocks and Bruce with that big time speed. And you can't let the emotions take over right there as you just got to hand the ball to the referee. Fortunate the touchdown stand, stands, but you're going to be kicking off from the 25 yard line now. Let's see what kind of field position field position Gardner Edgerton can get. Now well, Bruce with the 37 yard uh, touchdown run after a uh, huge penalty an unsportsmanlike conduct that would have got Gardner Edgerton probably off the field or at least uh, forced the Eagles to either pooch punt or go for it on fourth down and long. So both teams with some shoot yourself in the foot penalties and now the Eagles are gonna kick way back in their own territory. Yeah, it was third and 17 when the penalty happened, so you're giving Olathe North a little bit of momentum being able to go for it on fourth down. Both the uh, coaching staffs uh, giving their uh, players an earful as they hate these uh, senseless 15-yard penalties. Van Lerberg is the deep man, and he ain't deep anymore as the Latha North will kick off from their own 25. Into the wind, too. Yeah, and Lurberg is waiting near the 20 yard line and will be fielded by an up man near the 26 yard line. And this is the cost of your penalty as Griffin Martin back up running back with a nice return. And now it'll be Gardner Edgerton ball, only leading by a touchdown, 518 to play before Hyvie at the half. Numbers and highlights. Brought to you by your home, Hy-Vee Stores. And now Powell. Seen a, a nice long touchdown pass, but uh, he's had some sloppy ball handling tonight as well. He's put it on the ground three times, lost two. And both teams have been uh, getting a lot of penalty flags tonight as this running play off the left side. Good to see Padilla back in, Johnny. Uh, some kind of leave for a while. He's still kind of a little gimpy out there. Well, I was watching him on the sideline trying to get, you know, some high knees in, trying to, you know, show the coaches, hey, I'm ready to go back in the game. But you can definitely tell he's got a little bit of a limp going on, but tough kid. He wants to be out there and help his team win tonight. Got four, second down and six. Quick pitch it out. And this is one of those uh, guys that they get to the edge, and that is... Hawk, it's no, check that. I beg your pardon, that is Griffin Martin. And Griffin scored a touchdown in the win against uh, Mill Valley last week. He was the backup running back, got a late touchdown. And 
he gets a uh, quick toss here. He's uh, the left wing on this play, and say this guy's got a lot of upside. Griffin Martin. Well, you see the broken tackle picking up an extra five yards. Good play call there by Coach Delaney. So it is a first down run. And this one is the fullback's turn, and uh, not much doing for Padilla. Looks like he got a wrap on his uh, knee there as Van makes the defensive stop. But when you look at his right knee there, it looks like uh, Padilla has that wrapped. And but he is back in the game. Second down and eight. And Braven Powell, nice moves, calling his own number. And then does the smart thing, runs out of bounds. Trevor Vasquez. Escorted him to the chalk, but not after he gained the necessary yardage for the first down. Braven Powell. Yeah, once he gets past that first line, of, first line of defense, he turns into a running back, and you see the playmaking ability. Does the smart thing, gets out of bounds. Clock just under four minutes here. Gardner has no timeouts left. First and ten. And Powell slips and goes down. Yes. Looked like Caleb Taylor caused that tackle for a loss, number 88, the defensive end for Olathe North. He's done a pretty good job setting that edge for Olathe North. Had a tough time trying to get outside of him right there. Staying fundamentally sound. It's tough when the ball doesn't come your way for three or four plays. Can't over pursue. And right there, Taylor's ready to. Second down and long. Powell. Goes deep middle, Randy Singleton the catch inside the 25. Randy still juking, and Randy finally gang tackle down near the 23 yard line. It'll be a gain of 16 and a first down. And now some pushing and shoving after the play, and the officials have to separate the players. And this is a heated rivalry game in the Sunflower League, and Steve Moritz, the uh, umpire, had to be the uh, separator of these guys. Yeah, you'll see here at the end. I don't know if we'll be able to see it. Good catch by Singleton. He's got to get down. You don't want those defenders to be able to poke that ball loose, but it's when the Gardner Edgerton guy comes and just kind of yanks the Olathe the North player off the pile to kind of set everybody off. It was Braven Powell, the quarterback, that was down there blocking, and that really caused the skirmish as this play is stopped in mid motion. Flag down. And the play clock not was not reset. We killed the play. Here we go. So just a play clock situation. No flags. First and ten from the 23-yard line for the Trailblazers. moves yes it will get it near the 18 yard line gain about five yards on the play of course this is the school they're spotted officially at the 19 this is the school that you know the guy they call Bubba played at mm -hmm. he was quite the player Bubba Starling Hollywood name and played for the Kansas City Royals of course first round draft pick as here's Kindler, doesn't get that many touches at fullback. But this is a guy last year that ran for 1,530 uh, touchdowns. And he gets it uh, just one shy of the uh, first down. It'll be third down and about a yard. Dawson Kindler will be in the halftime show as a homecoming king candidate. There's four guys from the football team that will be doing double duty tonight. And there's a quarterback sneak. And it is a first down run for a Braven Powell. Yeah, and they're in no hurry here. You got 138 on the clock. Again, they do not have any timeouts, but you're kind of in that area where you can get guys lined up pretty quickly in between plays. So and looks 
like an official's timeout. Might have had a player not leave the field after losing a helmet. Being told that that would be the center. Whitley lost his helmet and stayed out on the field. He's an important guy, the center. Okay, 74. Yeah. Lost his helmet. And he's saying, hey, it was ripped off my head. As he signaled to the official, as Braven Powell running it, spinning. I'm told uh, Steve Moritz is not the uh, umpire tonight. That is uh, Paul Settler. Steve Moritz, the uh, line judge. But uh, Braven Powell uh, doing a little spin move here. And Looked like somebody got a hold of his chin strap. Yep, he was able to get a nice gain. Second down and four. And this running play pounded inside, and once again, the center lost his helmet again. Let's see if they'll make him leave the field. <laughs> he didn't try and argue with anybody that time. He picked it up and jogged off the field. But you know, like you said, Kev, that's the center. And, you know, you're kind of getting into that crunch time. Yep. Be running behind the center a lot, so we'll see what the backup center can do here. Well, yeah, this time he leaves. And the backup center is in the ball game, so watch on snaps. Third down and one. Powell lost the football. Ball on the field. Scooped up going back the other way. And the Eagles. Going to get a little scoop and score action with Jeremiah Rhodes. And they're a PAT away from tying it. And man, four times the Blazers have put it on the field. And the fans are as stunned as I am. As maybe it was the center exchange here, Johnny. You, you've been in a backup center. Let's, we'll have to... Get a microscopic look here, but we've seen backup punters put the ball on the field. Backup centers have problems. And Jeremiah wasn't a bullfrog. Jeremiah scooped it and scored. And he's going to go like 97 yards for a defensive score. And now the PAT try. 18 not listed on the Olathe North. Uh, Fighting Eagles roster, so your guess is as good as mine who's kicking these PATs. He's left footed, he's a soccer style kicker, and he's tied the ball game. That's all we know about 18. But Jeremiah Rhodes, ball on the field. You think it's going to be a late second quarter touchdown for Gardner Edgerton, and nope, the quarterback, that's not on the center, that's on the QB. Looked like that was Vasquez with the forced fumble. Again, if you're pal, you've got to take care of that football. It looked like it was just a simple quarterback sneak to try and pick up the first down. And wow, Vasquez able to put that shoulder pad right on that football, popped it right out. Now there's two Vasquez's, which uh, uh, Jacob, I believe. Okay, because the they're one identical forced. twins. There's Trevor and there's Jacob. Okay, it was. The Sam linebacker, number 17, and even the coaching staff has to uh, ID these kids so they line them up right. Because one is a rover and one's a Sam linebacker. Ah, changes in momentum. And you thought Gardner Edgerton would get a late score. They'll have their homecoming kings and queens announced, and they'd have a nice lead. And now they're saying 98 yards for. Jeremiah Rhodes. From the eight on the return. And this is a nice return. As that's your guy, Griffin Martin. 
I'm telling you, this guy's going to get more and more snaps. He keeps making plays. Scored a touchdown last week. And uh, he's doing a good job on special teams. We've seen him play a little wing back. And boy. Now Braven Powell, Johnny. I mean, three turnovers. For Gardner Edgerton tonight. And Latham North's had two. We've had five turnovers in all, and now they'll just take a knee. And it's homecoming halftime. But wow, if you're Gardner Edgerton, you got to be a little bit stunned here, Johnny. Eagles all even with the Blazers on a late 98-yard scoop and score. Jeremiah Rhodes, turnover number three by GE is a costly one. And we've got a tie ball game here in the Sunflower Conference here in week five. Yeah, it looks like Gardner Edgerton was getting ready to go up 21 to seven. Like you said, going into halftime, celebrating homecoming. They're in a dog fight, tied up 14 all now. Fans all excited for the 2023 homecoming. Emerald City is the theme. Of course, Emerald City is the Wizard of Oz. You're uh, wondering about the Emerald City. So we'll see a nice uh, halftime performance. Let's check in with Bethany with the Olathe North coach, Coach McCartney. Coach, a slow start for the Eagles, but a few plays and you're right back in it. What did it take for your team to get going? Uh, we just need to remain consistent and uh, make sure we're not getting pen penalties that are hurting us. Um, that's kind of cost me some stuff. And continue to create turnovers. That's That's been a big help for us, so we'll keep trying to do that. You tell me T.J. Porter, a twisted ankle. Uh, any chance we might see him in the second half, or is he done? You, know, you never know. Um, the guy's tough, and, and uh, he's wanting to get in, and you know we're just trying to be smart with him. So. We get some, it's mid-season, so we got to be smart. Thanks, Coach. Good luck. Thank you. Halftime here at the USD 231 Activity Complex. 98 yards the other way. Scoop. This is a bounce pass to Rhodes here. Bounce right up to his hands, and he takes it the other way for six. Tied at halftime here on the High V High School Game of the Week.
welcome to High V at the half. As we've got homecoming 2023 uh, ceremonies going on on the field. And we got Bethany Bowman up at the booth here. Wow. Bethany, uh, you were down on the field. Uh, we saw a chippy first half. Was it uh, the language salty? Was there some chippiness? Were there hard hits? What was uh, your ground level uh, take on all this uh, animosity between these teams? Yeah, well, it's a really physical game for one. So, I mean, that right there, you know, you're getting hit and, you know, you're, you're making big big plays and, and making big hits. It's obviously it's going to get really chippy. But, um, you know, I think for Olathe North, we do, talked about, you know, with last week's game and this one, Gardner Edgerton playing with a chip on their shoulder and losing in that state title game. Olathe North fell out of the playoffs a lot earlier last year than, than I think they anticipated. They lost to Blue Valley West, who's, you know, a very dangerous team and a good team, but one that I think they thought they should beat and move on in the playoffs. I think they felt like they had every right to be in the position Gardner Edgerton was at the end of the season. So it's just, like I said, a very physical game. Um, two teams that definitely um, don't want to lose tonight. Olathe North, uh, as they were leaving the field, I heard some, this is our house. Of course, we're here at, <laughs> at Gardner. It is uh, the Trailblazers' home, but, um, you know, both teams, I think, just feel like they're going to take over this field in the second half. So Gardner Edgerton, obviously the three fumbles, none costlier than the last one. Did you hear the coaches talking to the guys on the sideline? I saw about four or five coaches meet Powell about five yards out on the field. What do you think they're talking to him about? Yeah, well, like uh, I think I said in the open, Jesse Owen and Chris McCartney said that discipline was a huge key and eliminating, eliminating turnover is a huge key in this game. So I think some frustration from both the coaching staffs. Um, probably I'd have to look at the stats, but, you know, the most turnovers both teams have had in a game this season, I would imagine. So um, I think they're just telling them to, to stay disciplined and, you know, do what they know how to do, that both teams have been really good through all four games this season, and tonight we're just uh, seeing some things exposed, but it's two you know, really good teams, two, de two good defenses, two good offenses. Well, and that's what I kind of thought is, you know, when you get amped up like this, you, you kind of forget that you're still just playing football, right? So, you know, I'm sure these coaches are talking to their guys about get back to the fundamentals. You know, you got to hold on to the football. You see a couple times on those mesh points, they're just not where the ball needs to be, and, you know, you can't have costly penalties, and you can't have costly turnovers, and Obviously, I'm sure Gardner's, you know, in there pretty upset about it's 14-14 on homecoming. we got to come out in the second half and take care of business. Yeah, I'll go down and uh, talk to Coach Owen. I think he'll, he'll probably feel like there's a lot of points maybe left out there on the board and also points that shouldn't be on the board for Olathe North that his team kind of gave away. I mean, big plays for Olathe North, and, of course, sometimes those are the plays that win games, but... Um, from the line of scrimmage, Olathe North can't get a lot going. I mean, that defensive line for Gardner Edgerton, really good. Yeah. Um, there's times where the quarterback doesn't even have a chance to, to really do anything with the ball or the uh, running back. So um, I think I think if they can continue to keep the game that way, that uh, Gardner should be able to do what they did before 14 points put on the board for the Eagles. Once again, the homecoming king and queen candidates being announced by the public address announcer. And we can uh, kind of listen in and see who gets the uh, honor for 2023 on this Emerald City homecoming night in Gardner. The Ryder Cook is the son of Brandon and Hillary Cook and brother to Izzy Getz, a junior here at GEHS. And Lincoln Getz, a seventh grader at Pioneer Ridge. Ryder attends Madison where he is a kindergartner. His favorite subject in school, recess, me too, Ryder. In his free time, he likes to fish and be outdoors. And when he grows up, Ryder would like to be in the United States Marine Corps. Let's hear it for Rhea and Ryder. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for is finally upon us. Your 2023 GHS homecoming king and queen are Connor and Caroline. Congratulations to the 2023 King and Queen here at Gardner Edgerton. And Ivy at the half continues numbers and highlights just around the corner.
High V proud to support Kansas City High School Athletics. Homecoming night here at Gardner Edgerton, week five. Number one Gardner playing host to number two Olathe North, and we are tied at the intermission, and we got a new king and queen for uh, 2023, and the necessary uh, pictures. Everybody, uh, everybody, uh, Johnny, were you a homecoming king there at Piper there? No? Okay, Johnny's saying no. They don't even, they don't even, in the truck, they don't even say, well, Wyke, were you? No, heck no. <laughs> Wyke, no shot. No shot. So, yeah, yeah. well, that's, uh, that young lady seems very happy, but uh, interesting first half, Johnny. A lot of turnovers, a lot of penalties. Not the most crisp first half by both these teams, but if you're Olathe North and you're tied and you're going to get the football to start the third quarter, momentum's on the visitor side right now. Well, especially forcing that turnovers, you know, we talked about it. They could have went down 21-7 going into halftime, and all the momentum then's on gardner Edgerton side, but, you know, they bend but didn't break and big turnover force if you're Gardner Edgerton you got to take care of the football and you can't have costly penalties and uh, we've seen both teams uh, have costly penalties and I think that's something that the coaches talk to their guys about is you got to keep your emotions in check and play in between the whistles and the Eagles come back out on the field to get stretched out we'll continue with high V at the half we still got uh, your uh, first half highlights for you in this 14-14 lockup Welcome back to hy at the half. 14-14 your score, and let's get to your hy first half highlights in this Sunflower Conference matchup. Yeah, we talked about a little bit of a muddy first half there for Gardner Edgerton. You see the fumble there on the first drive, giving Olathe the North good field position, but you see the tip there, Bojanski going up, picking that ball off, returning it inside Olathe the North territory, but again, Powell puts the ball on the ground. Olathe the North fortunate enough to get that Fumble recovery. Next offensive possession for Gardner Edgerton. Powell to Hawkinson. First score of the game as you see that passing game kind of sneaks up on you. Seven nothing as Gardner Edgerton picks up the muff punt there. So that was a backup punter in at that time. Then late the North gets on the board here. Aiden Bruce with a 37 yard touchdown run set up by a Gardner Edgerton unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. And then to end the half, you see Rhodes 
Big scoop and score, 98-yard touchdown run. So both teams being able to score on defense, special teams. As we thought teams would come in, both teams would come in here putting points on the board, but you see the turnovers and the penalties costing both teams in this first half. If you need a loan, find now they're yeah, rushing yards. Like the North usually is the uh, team that always leads in rushing yards, but they're pretty balanced tonight. Well, actually, both teams are pretty balanced, but yeah, he points off of turnovers, turnovers, and penalties. Uh, just uh, the coach's nightmare. And as we get ready for the uh, start of the uh, third quarter, well, Lathan North going to have the football. What should we see? By the way, uh, looks like Bruce will be the main tailback. Uh, Bethany uh, Bowman uh, checking in and, and saying that Porter has a, an injury to his ankle, and they. Uh, feel like this is only week five, so they're going to arrest him. But you, you've seen TJ wanting to get in the game. But uh, what should we see from uh, Olathe North as far as the third quarter goes in that first drive? Well, there hasn't been a lot of drop off with Aiden Bruce at the running no. back position. And that's, you know, you talk about the depth that they have over there in the skill positions for Olathe North. And, uh, you know, I think they're going to continue to try and pound the football. I think the passing game has had success. Uh, you know, this. Defensive line for Gardner Edgerton is just really tough, and they're getting pressure on the quarterback. So, I think for a late the North, you know, you got to get the run game going, set up the passing game, and again, try not to turn the ball over, try not to shoot yourself in the foot with costly penalties, and play fundamental football. Let's check in with Bethany. I just talked with head coach Jesse Owen. Not much to say from him. Obviously, just kind of what you guys talked about. You know, coach's nightmare. A lot of penalties, turnovers, being sloppy with the football. I think that's probably the most frustrating thing for a coach is, you know, his team's not playing bad. It's just the little things that they can take care of to win this football game. So that's what he wants to see them go do in the second half. Both coaches very uh, close to the best with their comments. As they know each other well. Jesse was a coach there at Olathe North. McCartney was there, and so. I think you come into this game and you have keys to the keys to the game that are going to lead you to victory, and I'm sure both coaches talked about we can't have costly penalties and we've got to win the turnover margin. So look for both teams to clean it up in the second half. Expect a very physical second half, but I do think both teams kind of clean up the, the extracurricular activity after the whistle. Adrian will kick it off for Gardner Edgerton. Bruce back there. He had a 90-yard kickoff return last week for Olathe North. We've seen him be explosive in this ball game. Here we go. There is Aiden Bruce, senior. Kicking against the wind, so Olathe North. Return it from the one. Bruce. And that's a nice return across the 25 out near the 28 yard line. And now here come the Eagles on offense. Sarver through an interception. He's been taking some shots back there. But uh, they're going to need a big second half from JMO. There you see TJ Porter. Uh, not getting in the game with that ankle injury. He's out. Bruce is the uh, main tailback, but now it's like Miller Jones in at quarterback. So there's a change right there. Miller Jones in at quarterback. The transfer from Blue Valley North. Bruce off the right side. And he'll get about three yards. So what do, what do we know about Miller Jones? You uh, you know this kid pretty well, Johnny. Tell me a little bit about uh, Miller Jones. Well, he, he's fast. He can definitely uh, get up and down the field with the best of them. But you know he's worked really hard to to get on the field as a quarterback. And you know you like to see guys that you know don't pout when they're not named the starter. And I think he's done everything the coaching staffs ask. And it's the type of player you want on that side of the ball. And here's Miller. Calls his own number and. Spins for a nice game. The coaching staff say he's athletic, he's quick, he's a high football IQ guy, also a very high GPA in the classroom. Yeah, and that's one of the things, you know, you, you notice with these guys from freshman and sophomore year getting into their, their latter years of high school is they just got to continue to put the weight on and, you know, be able to take these hits 
repetitively throughout a, uh, a football game, and that's something he's working on. He's able to get the uh, first down on that last run. Got six and a half. And this is Bruce. Bruce got a little brother, uh, Kobe, so the Bruce name will be popping back up here at Old Lathan North. Kobe is a freshman. Of course, his brother Arlen went to Iowa, now has transferred to Oklahoma State as a wide receiver. And Jones cutting it up. Very decisive. And looks like he's going to get about three more, maybe four. And it's going to be third down and manageable for Olathe North. Yeah, and that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to stay on schedule, keep your third downs under five yards. See, Jones, like you said, it was a quarterback designed run, and instead of being fancy, he just tucks the football, lowers the shoulder pads, and picks up positive yards. Scoreboard says third down and six. It looks like it's about third down and about four. And then Miller Jones is not going to get there either way, whichever one you believe. As he is ridden down there, as that was Caleb Dewey, the uh, linebacker slash safety man, their second leading tackler, and it's going to be fourth down coming up. And now it's about fourth down and about six. That's just form tackle there, as Bojanski uh, little icing on the top of that cake. But it was Dewey, leading tacklers Saviston, Spencer Easley, and Dewey. They're their leading tacklers on the team as this punt away by Sarver, high hanging, not very long. Gonna take a nice little roll for Olathe North inside the 20 yard line. It'll be 36 yards and no return. And we'll get the offense out now for Gardner Edgerton. Well, we've seen a long pass, Johnny, but we've seen some sloppy ball handling. And uh, I don't know, I can't give this uh, offense uh, a high uh, grade in the classroom tonight as they just have not been sharp. Well, and Powell seems like the type of guy he's going to own it. You know, he's going to go in that locker room at halftime and let his teammates know, you know, he's going to come out and play better. And, you know, he's the leader of this offense. He can't turn the ball over. And like I said, I expect these teams to clean it up in the second half. Officially spotted at the 19-yard uh, line. And now... Uh, Blair has have to uh, sub off. Number four has got something problem with his uh, jersey. And subbing in will be Richard Van Lerberg. A little quick toss. Butash to the outside. And Butash will get a short gain. Good move there by Trevor Vasquez on the edge. Is this a jersey violation here? That's so maybe his pants are uh, not. Uh, Sometimes they, they want the knee pads over the knees, right? And those right. guys play it. You see Jalen Watson getting in there. First contact, but yeah, I mean, it's pretty simple. Hey, just put your knee pad over your knee. Second down and nine for the Blazers. Quick toss. And he goes on it, Gunderson. Slammed the door shut as the wing that time came around. Grant Ellis, say hello to Mike linebacker Nate Gunderson. Well, we've talked about how Gunderson is going to have to be a playmaker tonight. As you see, he kind of filters through that trash there of the offensive line coming through and able to find the ball carrier. When he hits you, you know it. He's probably got close to 10 tackles tonight. Dad was former athletic director, Joe Gunderson, baseball coach, swing it out. And that's Padilla down the sideline. He's escorted out. Let's see where they're going to spot this football. It was Jacob Vasquez, the Sam linebacker, that got him out. And let's see, they're spotting it a little bit short of the first down. And now they say it is a first down. Yeah, it was hard to tell where he went out on the sideline, but no measurement. Chain gang moved it short, and then the officiating crew said first down as this is just the fullback just carrying tacklers. That is a sire Padilla. Good to see him back. He, like he uh, nicked himself up in the uh, 
First half had a knee issue that they uh, taped up and he's back in. That was a uh, gain of six yards, second down and four for the Gardner Edgerton offense. Play action. This is where they like to go deep, and they go to Randy Singleton. Oh, over his head, incomplete. Rhodes had the coverage. Singleton got behind the defense, but the pass sailed long, incomplete. Yeah, good coverage. Rhodes down the field. You see the double coverage. Singleton gets behind there, but kind of a tough angle of a throw there for Powell to get it over the top. Third down, long four, make it five. Powell cutting it up, ridden down by Amari Musau, the senior Will linebacker. And it's going to be fourth down and still need a couple. And let's see what uh, Gardner Edgerton wants to do. You see the patience there by Powell, but a lot of white jerseys around that football. Fourth down and two. Trying to get a cadence penalty, and now uh, it will be a drop back for a pooch punt by Braven Powell. Low, not very long, and the Eagles just going to let this hit as it rolls inside the 40-yard line. And it's going 34 yards, no return. Eagles get it back. And, well, the defense is Johnny in the third quarter stepping up. Yeah, we talked about both teams averaging 48 yards or 48 points per game. Usually know what happens when you talk about the offenses. The defenses show up. Both teams take a lot of pride in being physical up front, setting the tone in the running game, but yet to break through on either for either offense tonight. Eagles from their own 38, Sarver back in at quarterback. Sarver wants to run, and Sarver has the ball jarred free, and it's covered up. I think it's Williams that got on it for his second fumble recovery of the game. First one went for a touchdown. This one for the Eagles, third turnover of the ball game. And it looked like Sarver just kind of got stood up. And Who jarred the ball free is I want, the guy I want to know. Uh, Right there. Yeah, that is uh, Dewey, the cat linebacker. And he has been everywhere. He's been like a cat all over the place. And 96 gets it. Dewey gets the fumble cause, fumble recovery by 96, Isaiah Williams. And now let's see if the Blazer offense can capitalize from the 31, first and 10. Padilla, nothing doing right there is Trevor Vasquez, the uh, rover. He's kind of like uh, the cat version of the gardner Edgerton guy, the uh, yeah, linebacker slash safety that moves all around. And these guys make a lot of tackles. Trevor Vasquez, an identical twin with his uh, brother Jacob, who is the Sam linebacker. Who had the big time force fumble on that goal line stand. Yep. Turned into the 98 yard touchdown return. No gain, second down and 10, low pass. Get it in the hands of a playmaker. Here's Randy Singleton down the sideline, first down and more. And kind of delivered a shot on MJ Mack at the end of it. But Randy Singleton, the catch and the run, yards after the catch for number one, Randy Singleton. Well, and watch Hawkinson down the field. He's, he's the guy that's got the block that kind of springs Singleton, as you see there. He's blocking Jalen Watson enough to where Singleton can get around the corner, picking up a first down. From the 20, first and 10. Give it off Padilla. Works his way for a couple. Padilla's the sophomore that they feel has the high upside, the speedy guy, 5.4 yards per carry. Had a 47-yard touchdown last week. Now he'll come off the field. Usually we see uh, Snipe, Nemo Snipe, 
Sophomore gets some touches. Sometimes Kindler will get in. Snipe getting a chance as the fullback. And now Powell's got to eat it in the backfield as he's going to lose yardage. And that's Van, number 78. Doing a great job on the Eagles' D-line. Well, when you're kind of in that third and long situation, we know Gardner does not like to throw the football a ton, but definitely think this is a passing situation here, but you also are in four-down territory, so don't necessarily have to throw it. There's Dustin Delaney in the foreground calling the plays for this flex bone. Third down and nine. Powell to throw, going to fade to Hawkinson. Flag is down. And it's in the secondary for Olathe North. The home fans calling pass interference or holding on Olathe North. But let's see what the officiating crew wants to call. penalty on Olathe North. Oh, wait a minute. Now uh, offsetting now. Wait a minute. I thought he just signaled wrong. Now they're saying offsetting penalties. Wow, that changes things big time. Pass interference was on Olathe North. Holding. Now we're going to get another call. Man. Okay, two on the defense. So it was a holding before the ball was thrown, and then it was pass interference after the ball was in the air. And I think that was the reason why he didn't have a hat because he threw his hat as the second flag. I was trying to follow along. Yeah, you see the grab by Rhodes on Hawkinson. Fans cheering as the officials mark it just inside the 10 yard line where it'll be first and goal now for the Blazers trying to grab the lead here in the third quarter. They led it 14 to nothing before 14 unanswered by the Eagles. And Powell. Nice blocking off the left side, and they get a nice gain to the five-yard line, a gain about four. These guys on the offensive line, Johnny, you need some uh, credit here. Gabe James, number 71, nice block there, big surge, the left guard. Whitley, we've seen him lose his hat a few times. And then on the other side, they got Matt Locke and Moore. They're the two juniors, but the strong side is the left side with Gabe James, the returning starter, and big surge. Second down and goal from the five, and big uh, blocking by the fullback, but the quarterback keeping it, and Gunderson not fooled at all. As they sent the fullback through there, and that was a Kindler. And Powell called his own number, and Gunderson, the heady Mike linebacker, not faked that at all, makes the play, and now it's third down and goal from the four. Well, you talk about running backs being able to hide behind the, the their offensive lineman. Gunderson does a good job of hiding behind his defensive line, kind of shooting the gaps, making big-time plays. Powell following his right side blocks, goes low into the end zone. Touchdown, Gardner Edgerton. Four-yard rushing touchdown, Braven Powell. So the turnover is cashed for six by the home team. Extra point, splits the uprights, and it is a 21-14 ball game, late third quarter. Drive all starting with the fumble recovery as Powell really gets low, Johnny, on this run. Well, I think he realized, you know, it's tough to pick up that 
that last yard and getting the end zone. And, and you see protecting that ball as that knee hits the ground just as that ball's crossing the goal line. But, uh, it's it's tough yardage down inside the five yard line. And, you know, Latha North wasn't trying to give up any points, but Gardner Edgerton eight plays capped that off. Four yard t TD run by Powell, 322 off the clock. Again, Olathe North giving them good field position on the fumble. Eight rushing touchdowns on the season for Powell. 10 passing touchdowns, a good balance by number six. Let's go back to the fumble recovery. Big hit there by uh, Dewey, jarred the ball free, and Mr. Right Place, Right Time has been number 96 in blue, Isaiah Williams. Yeah, he's got two fumble recoveries tonight, one for a touchdown, and one right there that sets his team up with the short field. They're able to take advantage and go up by seven. If I'm GE, I'm not kicking to number seven. They've been kicking to him lately. And I think that's some uh, scary work you're doing there. Here's Bruce with the nifty moves. And Bruce, again, it's a good return, but I just think you're uh, playing with fire by kicking to Aiden Bruce with his explosiveness. And he had a 90-yard kickoff return last week in their win. They beat Shawnee Mission South 54-31, so. Well, he's the type of guy, he makes the first guy miss, whether he's a ball carrier or a kick returner, and, you know, to me, you want to kick away from him, but. Well, Gardner Edgerton has faith in their special teams, and they've come down and made a nice stop, but he continues to return the ball well, and if he just gets a seam, a little crack, this guy, so dangerous, this return out to the 33-yard line as it's going to be Sarver in at quarterback. And the running back is Adger, number 22, Blaze Adger. Also plays some tight end for this team. So Porter's ankle, a no-go tonight. Pass through the hands of Bruce, incomplete. And a flag late. Eli Porter hit the receiver. Now Bruce... Couldn't hold on to the ball now. This is uh, the, flint, the, the defenseless receiver here. Uh, I mean, once again, player safety, a big point of emphasis for the officials on both sides of the state line. And I think it. And it's a personal foul. Uh, well, replay the down. No damage for either side, but. So they called a personal foul on both teams. Well, they called a holding. Oh, okay. Yeah, I beg right your pardon. Yeah. We got the okay, holding. Okay, there's right the there. hold. And, and again, you got to play smart football. You could tell he wasn't going to catch the ball. I get it. Emotions are running high. You just got to run through them and not make contact. And this running play, not doing too much. Spencer Easley, another nice play on Aiden Bruce. So you've got Bruce. I mean, T.J. Porter is their 1A. This guy's the 1B. So they don't lose a lot when Bruce is in at running back. But still, you'd like to see T.J. being able to play tonight. But out with that ankle injury. Second down and nine. Sarver rolling, throwing, and wide for Simmons. Incomplete. A flag is down. Mark Dibiak is making the game really tough for this Olathe North offensive line. And they're holding penalty on Olathe North. So uh, pressure coming from the uh, Gardner Edgerton front seven and the Eagles are grabbing and that's going to move it back and now it's going to be third down and super long Mitch McCartney hands on his hip frustrated wanted his team to play disciplined football and their 
Saying uh, second down and long as this pass down the field is caught near midfield. Nope, incomplete. As they were looking for Miller Jones, also Bruce was in the air. There were two receivers right there. That's a bad play set up there. And let's see who they were really targeting here, Johnny. Well, you see the play get extended, and now you got to kind of have guys get to certain spots. Everybody's trying to work back to the quarterback. Yeah, well, it was uh, Bruce that was trying to make the catch, but Jones was in the area as well. That was a second down play. So now we're at third down. And it looks like about 18. Third down and 18. Sarver in trouble. Sarver dodging tacklers, keeping the play alive, and now throwing down the field incomplete to Bruce. Flag down. Looks like uh, pass interference coming up on Eli Porter as they continue their battle. The battle of the sevens tonight, Johnny. Yeah, it's interesting to see here on this pass play if it was even catchable. Again, give a lot of credit to Sarver as he running for his life, extending that play, able to keep his eyes down the field. Going to pick up the first down here. Well, Dibiak nearly got the sack, and then... And... Once again, the penalty on Eli Porter against Aiden Bruce. And once again, uh, motions running high. This is a big uh, Sunflower Conference game. One versus two in the state poll. Unsportsmanlike conduct on uh, Gardner Edgerton. And no pass interference. Now the Gardner Edgerton homecoming fans, they were so happy at halftime. Now, a lot of boos coming from the home side. They are not happy. So the ball will be moved up to the 46 yard line on the plus side, so north in the plus territory. And being helped by Gardner Edgerton penalties. Sarver in the shotgun. Play action. Dumps it off quickly to Bruce. Bruce will lose a yard. Boy, these, he, these uh, trailblazers are really flying to the football. And nice play there by uh, Cam Porter. Once again, the officials telling the guys uh, cut the garbage after the play as you have seen some talking and some shoving after the tackle. Well, again, it's very simple, right? You know, you play in between the whistles, you do your job, you get back to the huddle, you make the next play. We know the referees are going to call a tight game from here on out, so you got to just make sure you keep your mouth closed. Once you make a play, turn around and walk the other way. Second down and 11, here's Bruce. Slicing his way for a short gain. Again, if you're wondering, where's T.J. Porter, that little running back, the 5'6 senior that's off to a great start this year, out with an ankle injury, has not played a snap tonight. They're holding him out because it's too early in the season. Bruce getting most of the touches. Adger's got a few touches. Now third down and long. Pass down the field is caught. What a catch by Smither. And Singleton tried to rake the ball free. Velcro hands by Cole Smither. And the junior wide receiver has an Olathe North first down, down to the 25-yard line. Yeah, Sarver stays in the pocket, knows he's going to take wow. a hit there as he delivers it and throws a strike to Smither. That is the final play of the third quarter. Come back for this Sunflower League game. We got a good one in Gardner tonight.
Ready for the start of the fourth quarter. 21-14 home team. Number one, Gardner Edgerton undefeated against number two, Olathe North, also undefeated. Winner has the leg up in the conference. And if they play in the playoffs, they'll have a home game, whether it be here or at ODAC. Here's Bruce picking his way. Such a patient runner. Savistan brings him down at the 20-yard line gain of four. And he just really can't get a clean shot on him. He's just constantly moving his feet and just kind of wiggles his way through. He's a big guy, but see here, just tough to bring down. He runs like Jameer Gibbs of the Detroit Lions, very upright, high knees. Of course, he's on my fantasy team, and David Montgomery gets all the points, so <laughs> no, I'm not bitter about it at all, no, no. Second down and seven play action. Sarver, screen pass, and the ball is dropped by Adger. It was a little off target. But if you're Adger, you've got to make that catch in a big ball game because he had running room. It looked like they had it set up pretty well. Well, you see Sarver does a good job of getting the ball over the outreach hands of Dibiak. Maybe a little bit of a tip there. That yeah, maybe, yeah. That ball off. But yeah, Adger, you got to bring that ball in as you got a bunch of green space in front of you to pick up some yardage. Third down and long, third down and seven. Sarver gonna go with a fade to the end zone to Miller Jones, and he got one hand on it incomplete. Good coverage by Bojanski, who had that interception back in the uh, first half. And now fourth down and seven. Eagles look like they're gonna go for it. Trailing by a touchdown and a PAT. Eagles will go for it. Fourth down and seven. 21-yard line of Gardner Edgerton. Plenty of time. Pass to a wide open receiver off his hands. Incomplete. Valdez stuck his hand up there. I want to see two hands there. He put one hand up, and the ball just glanced off his hands. Ball over on downs to the Trailblazers. I think it was Miller Jones coming across the middle, and he's kind of putting his hands up, like throwing me the ball, and kind of sets it up on that back edge. And well, you got to get that second hand up. You got to put everything you can in to try and make that catch, whether you're. That was fourth down. You got it. Yeah, you yeah. dive. You got to go get it. You got to go get it. So ball over on downs, give it off to Padilla, the fullback, for a couple up the middle. Let's see if they want to use clock as Gardner Edgerton leading by a touchdown. Van, another uh, defensive stop on the D-line. He's had a great game. Taylor's had a good game. Yarnell, this defensive line for Olathe North has been solid. I mean, Gunderson's going to pile up a bucket full of tackles. But... Uh, these guys on the D-line have really put in the yeoman's work tonight. Has now Powell the pitch. And this is Griffin Martin, and he runs into Rhodes, and Rhodes brought him out of bounds, stops the clock, and it's a tackle for a loss. Rhodes had that scoop and score to end the second quarter. 98 yards, making a big tackle here. It was Yarnell really messed up the chemistry on that play. The penetration by 58 was caused the back to veer backwards. And that helped with the tackle for the loss yardage that Rhodes will pile up on the play. Well, you've got this flex bone in third down and long. Third and 12, fade down the sideline. Too long. Targeting Randy Singleton. Rhodes had the coverage. And it'll be fourth down punting time now for GE. Well, we've seen Braven Powell stay in and kind of pooch punt it. Last time he averaged punt about 34 yards. And this one, he aims toward the sideline area. They come back into play. It's muffed at the 35. But this is MJ Mack, the son of Maurice Mack. 44 yards. 
About five yards on the return, and now the Eagles down by a touchdown, and PAT get it good field position, Johnny. Uh, tell you what, this game has turned into a, like a street fight here. Who's, who's gonna mess up? Who's gonna make a big play? Who's gonna get a dumb penalty? Well, I think that's what they're talking about in the Olathe North huddle. You know, who's going to step up and make a big play for us? You know, we've shot ourselves in the foot several times, and we've still got an opportunity to drive the ball down the field and tie this game up. Be Sarver on a quarterback run. Sarver gets a block down the field. Sarver across midfield for a first down. Jamo showing some great speed, good blocking up front. And the wide receivers also helping out. That was uh, Miller Jones, his uh, fellow quarterback, with a nice block down the field. From the 46, first and 10, Sarver again calling his own number. And he's ripped to the turf by Dewey, who's. I tell you, he and uh, Gunderson, uh, double figures on tackles tonight. And now Sarver a little uh, hitching his giddy up after that tackle as Dewey kind of spun him at the very end. And this is where you get your ankles and legs caught up. And second down and six. The run went for four. Low snap. Give it off. Again, Bruce with that patient run. Oh, man, he got tackled awkwardly. And he's a limber kid. I think he's going to be all right. It's a first down run. If it's me, call the ambulance. But this guy gets bent back. Well, look at the look at the flexibility on this young guy. Well, you see there the, the elusiveness, and like you said right there at the end, it's unfortunate, but you know, able to pop back up and get ready for the next play. Sarver, here in his Tim Tebow impersonation, trying to run the ball for the Olathe North. Defense and nothing doing on this play. Yeah, Sarver's a tough kid. You know, he's taking a couple hits tonight, but you know, his number's called. He's able to pick up big yards. See if he can continue to move this offense down the field. Is they're in no hurry in between plays right now, just trying to keep the drive going down the field. And lost yardage, second down and 12. Bruce, wow, whipped down by. Thomas Saviston, who looks like he's about 30 years old with that mustache, making the uh, tackle number 45, the Mike linebacker. Ball back to the original line of scrimmage in third and 10. Only the I don't think I could grow a mustache that good when I was 30 years old. <laughs> Kid's uh, 17 years old. Third down and 10. Fans turning up the noise, and we get a flag on Olathe North. That'll be the right tackle. Five yard penalty. So it'll be the sophomore in right. They like this guy. One of their upside super sophomores. Third down and 15 now for Sarver in the offense. Goes with the deep ball to Smither down the field. Ball is incomplete. Good coverage in the secondary. Ojanski back there. And now it'll be fourth down and 15 for the Eagles. 35 yard line plus 35. Let's see what the Eagles choose to do. Sarver can pooch a punt down the field. We still see Gardner playing up on the yep. up on the guy, so. Yep, he's gonna send a little pooch punt. A little uh, quarterback punting contest. Can they save it? And it'll be at the one foot line. Are you kidding me? Wow, what special teams work there. Jake. Let's see, who was that down there, Johnny? Uh, that was uh, for Olathe North. That was uh, Miller, Miller Jones. Jones, yeah. Heck of a play. Able to save it. Knocked it back to a teammate. Miller Jones. Wow, this is great special teams work. Ball hung in the air. Miller Jones flipped it back. 
And his teammate right there to put it down, Cole Smither. And now, watch out if you're Gardner Edgerton. You gotta get out of here without getting a safety. They go with a quarterback sneak with Braven Powell. Well, the last time they were backed up on the one, they went 99 yards on the drive, so. That's a good point. They're, you know, they're not a team that's, that's gonna panic here. They're gonna stay poised. You know, they do run the flex bone, so it's not like, you know, lining up under center is different. Kind of gives them the advantage to get a good little push, a little breathing room. They need to reset the play clock. It's at zero. That's what the holdup is. They did not reset the play clock. There you go. We are ready to go. Play clock running down from 25. Second down and long, second down and nine. Powell just lowers his head and shoulders and navigates to the 10 yard line. It's a nice run there. It didn't look like much, but gave him some breathing room and now it's gonna be third down and short. Well, and you see both hands on the football as he's going through the line of scrimmage. I'm sure that's something the coaches talked to him about. At halftime, and done a better job of taking care of the ball. Kindler in at fullback on third down and short. And Powell will keep it. And Powell has the first down. So it's been an up and down night for Braven Powell, but this is a nice conversion on third down and short. We've seen his ball handling a little uh, suspect, put the ball in the ground several times, but throwing the long 74 yard touchdown pass to. Hawkinson, and also had a touchdown run back in the third quarter. So, like I said, up and down game for Braven Powell. And Braven is kind of grabbing on to his fullback, the back of Kindler's jersey, and just follows him for a nice gain. Quarterback number six, Braven Powell. So, looks like uh, Coach Owen going with the veteran Kindler. Kindler blocking as a fullback on this play. You see Braven just hands on his hips, staring at the play clock. Going to get it down to single digits before he snaps it. And Kindler, pounding run out to the 20, a gain of three. So Kindler, we mentioned not getting as many snaps as the fullback, but. Ran for 1,530 touchdowns. Also a good athlete, a javelin thrower. But they want him more as the will linebacker. But they seem to trust number 38 here late in this one. On third down, Powell runs for another first down. Eagles needing a third down stop. Don't get it again. And this drive started near the goal line and Back-to-back -back first downs by the Blazers. Again, you see Kindler's the lead blocker. He knows his number one job is to get out in front of Powell and kind of create a running lane. And Powell's doing a good job of just staying patient, following his guys. Again, just, just trying to hold on to the ball and keep the chains moving as clock's now ticking under five minutes. Here at Latham North, you have three timeouts. Let's see when the Eagles want to start burning some timeouts. It's Powell again. Just kind of falling forward. He'll get it to the 28, gain of three. Man, you gotta have a stop if you're a Latham North. Gotta try and get some penetration up front. Try and get tackle for loss. This Gardner's just picking up steady three and a half, four yards each play. Need to kind of break the rhythm here. Yeah, they're getting small chunks, but effective chunks. And two critical first downs deep in their own territory. Keeps the clock running. Kindler. Flying forward. That was uh, Jacob Vasquez with the stop, and now we're going to see a uh, timeout used. And it's going to be by Olathe North. Hi B, proud to support Kansas City High School Athletics. Along with Bethany Bowman and Johnny Beck, Kevin White with you. And 
And we're on the Missouri side as Park Hill and Lee Summit have a conference game in the Suburban Silver. Should be a high scoring affair there next week. This might be a, a critical down and distance. Third down, you need a, a long five. And Lathan North has two timeouts left. We've got to be aware of the pass. You've got to be aware that Gardner Edgerton can sneak a guy in that secondary, pick up a big play. And they'll keep it on the ground with Kindler, and he is stuffed after a one yard gain. Yarnell makes the stop. Timeout will lay the north with 3.46 to go. And it looks like a punt coming up here for the Blazers. Van again doing a good job. And Yarnell, that defensive line, man, they've done a good job for Olathe North. And I guess we can expect a, well, we can't expect uh, the unexpected because you just never know in this game. But it's going to be fourth down, four, 31 yard line. You're in your own territory. Most likely, Johnny, I'm expecting a Brave and Powell punt. Yeah, and it's going to be good field position. Powell's averaging about 35 yards a punt, so you're looking at getting manageable field position. A lot of time still on the clock. You do only have the one timeout, but you kind of save those, uh, kind of keeping the time on the clock by calling those timeouts on this defensive possession here. Eagles safeties are staying put. Nobody coming back. Mack is usually their punt returner. He is staying at his normal depth as Powell is backed up to punt it, and now a flag is down. That would have been the punt of the night right there. That one got a lot of roll. Dead ball, full start on the offense. Five yard penalty. So fourth and four goes to fourth and nine. See if the Eagles send Mac. Mac is backpedaling to return this punt. That would have been a 59 yard punt. Yeah, that one got the ultimate field turf roll. And now, chances of replicating that are tough. He usually just sends these low runners down the field. Mac's going to let this one hit. And it's going to not be 59, but it's still a pretty good punt inside the 20 yard line down near the 19 yard line. 55, okay. Well, when you needed a big time punt by your quarterback, yeah. able to deliver and kind of flip the field. Scrap what I said about the good field position. Ethan North's gonna be starting inside of their 20 yard line, just on the 19. Well, we talked about plenty of time on the clock. You got the one timeout. Got to stay patient here if you're a Lathan North. You don't have to have the big play on first down. You're Gardner Edgerton, no big plays behind you. Keep everything in front. Make the sure tackles. No stupid penalties. Well, here comes the Lathan North Eagles down by a touchdown and a PAT. Quarterback is Sarver. And a throw, Dibiak chasing him, he got away, throws incomplete at the 30 yard line. That one was targeting Sam Simmons, the sophomore. Dibiak is again all over the place. You see him beat the tackle there and disrupt this play. And give a lot of credit to Sarver. This kid stuck in there, he's kept his eyes down the field. He knows he's gonna take, take the hit, but Able to put the ball where it needs to be. Wide receiver's got to help him out a little bit. Adger is the running back to the right hip of the quarterback. Sarver to throw. Wide open receiver. That's Miller Jones. He turns up the field. And he's got a first down catch at the 30-yard line. And Adger stayed in that time to, to help with Dibiak as he helped Chip. As they're starting to notice that if they can keep Dibiak off the quarterback, they can give... Quarterback enough time to throw the ball down the field. Miller Jones, good catch and turn up there for a first down. 11 yards on the pass as a flag is down. Pass is caught 
Simmons the catch, but a holding penalty is coming up on Olathe North. Well, they basically tackled Dibiak. Holding on the offense. Ten yard penalty, we played it down. And you see the double team there. That was Dibiak, he's been a menace all night. He's been in the backfield for Olathe North. He's working against the sophomore Enright. Enright got eaten up on that play, but he'll bounce back. First and long. Here's Sarver down the field. Pass going to be intercepted. Back the other way comes Cam Porter. Blockers in front. Flag is down. He's inside the 10. Down near the six-yard line. And this penalty flag is in the secondary for Gardner Edgerton. So the fans are going to get grumbly here real quick. <laughs> Yep. Holding on the defense. It's a 10 yard penalty, replay first down. They call that on the guy that got the interception, Porter? Again, no, it's hard to tell who it's, whoever was on the ground there. And again, not part of the play, but still could have affected where the ball was thrown. So now it's first and 10 from the 30 yard line after all the penalties. DBAC coming in, screen pass, Adger. Running room and uh, first down on the screen pass to Blaze Adger as he goes out of bounds to stop the clock, 236. Well, we saw that same play earlier in this quarter that went off Adger's hands and let the North a little circle around that play to come back to it. And you see why is there's all that green space out in front and able to move the chains and stop the clock. First and 10. Going down the field, Smither puts his right hand in the air, can't get it, coverage by Singleton. And now the referee threw his hat. So are we expecting a penalty coming up? I think he went out of bounds and came and then back in. First yeah. guy to touch it, yeah. First guy to touch it after uh, stepping out of bounds. Let's see what the call is from Terry Kinney. I think he turned his microphone off. Now we're uh, reading lips and they're saying no flag. So the hat toss was not a flag. We've seen the hat toss as a flag substitute earlier in this half. So it'll be second down and 10 from the 41. And Dibiak again with pressure. Dibiak gets the quarterback down. Got a little help by Isaiah Williams, but Dibiak completes the task. And he'll get credit for a half a sack there. And it'll be a timeout by the Eagles with 2.14 left. And you see the motor here not giving up on the play. Sarver knew it was coming. He felt that pressure and had to flush in the pocket. Fortunate to keep a grasp on that ball as he was kind of being flung around. Sometimes you see that ball get away from your body and get knocked loose, but like the North able to call a timeout, get the clock stopped, kind of get everybody a breather. You know you're in four down territory, but 
no timeouts left, so you're kind of going through the next few plays if you're able to pick up some positive yards here. You got to be able to get guys lined up and get the play calls in. Oh, yeah. Uncle Sam cheering on the uh, defense as we're at third down and 16. Boy, the fans on the home side making a ruckus here. Dibiak with the pressure. Dibiak with another sack. Ball came out. They're saying the player is down. It'll be Olathe North ball, and Sarver has to scrape himself off the turf. As a kid whose dad was a star at Olathe North, makes the sack, Mark Dibiak. And as the game's gone along, seems like he's just wearing people down, and he's staying locked in as, again, he's really disrupted this drive. Able to get his hands on the quarterback the last two plays. You got to keep somebody back to help double team him. You cannot let him go one on one. Five sacks now by the GE defense. Fans again turning up the volume on fourth down. Now they're in trouble. Quarterback scrambling like they had a uh, play design there, but it's going to be intercepted near midfield by Gardner Edgerton as that's going to be it. Eli Porter with the interception for the Blazers and their fans loving it now as their defense been strong all year comes up big as they only gave up seven points tonight. The other score was a uh, defensive score and this looked like uh, they were going to give it off to Miller Jones and then Sarver just throws it down the field. Thought there was going to be some kind of gadget play there. And instead, Eli Porter gets the interception and Olathe North's fourth turnover of the night. Hard to win on the road when you turn it over four times, but your opponent gave it to you three times. And the Porter Twins, they've had a great night. Victory formation set up by the Blazers. And the homecoming dance still intact. Good as gold tomorrow. As the Blazers are going to win on their homecoming 2023 and beat a team that's beaten three straight. Well, and I think that's something to be said. It doesn't matter, you know, which team was coming in here with momentum. They knew when this week came up on Monday, it was going to be a dog fight. It was going to be physical. Gardner Edgerton knew they were going to take the best shot they could from Olathe North. And Give a lot of credit to Olathe the North, man. Without their starting running back, they came out here, they fought. They muddied this game up as much as they could. They're going to come up short, but heck of a game. Yep. It's a blue and white celebration on homecoming 2023. Gardner Edgerton holding off Olathe the North 21 to 14. So they have a leg up in the conference. And now if they play a playoff game coming up in the later parts of the season, it'll be played right here at USD 231. So it'll be home field advantage for the team trying to get back to the 6A state championship. Final score once again, 21-14. Gardner Edgerton is victorious at home. Raven Powell scoring the game-winning four-yard touchdown run. And it occurred late in the third quarter. Raven threw a touchdown pass, ran one in. And we saw a couple of defensive scores by both teams. And Aiden Bruce, a 37-yard touchdown run. T.J. Porter not playing tonight. Out with an ankle injury. And you see the coaching staff embracing good sportsmanship. Everybody knows everybody. Josh Carroll played there. Brian McCall played at Olathe North. Jesse Owen played at Olathe North. So... 
a lot of familiarity. I, I asked the coaches if it would be weird playing against a team that, you know, he coached against and played against, but they said it's time has passed. Uh, we're good to go. And the final is in. 21-14, GE wins it. Here's Bethany. Coach, a hard-fought win. You guys come out on top. What would you say uh, just about their grit and obviously overcoming a lot of adversity tonight? Tremendous grit. I think we saw tremendous grit by both teams, and it was a fun high school football game, and our guys dug down and made a few, few more plays at the end, but uh, I think both teams played really hard. Maybe some things to learn. Uh, ball security next week is that in the game plan for a practice? Oh, absolutely. You, you hate. You never want to beat yourself, and I think that probably happened to both teams throughout the game here and there. But uh, yeah, we have a lot to work on. Yeah. But this team has some fight. Finds ways to win. It's got to be a lot of fun. I love them. Thanks, Coach. Congrats. Thank you, Bethany. Number one, Gardner Edgerton, five and zero, oh, and Olathe North suffers their uh, first loss of the year. They're now four and one. High V post game coming up next here on Spectrum News. Hy-Vee post game and Johnny, uh, Sunflower Grinder. Uh, it wasn't the prettiest of games, a lot of penalties, a lot of turnovers, seven in all. And we saw some big defensive scores. Uh, your final thoughts? I think it was a really physical football game and uh, it's gonna be a good building block for both teams. I think you heard Coach Owens just talk about, it's a lot to learn from this game, but you know, anytime you get these two type of caliber teams playing against each other, Sometimes the result's not what people think. I think everybody thought it was going to be a high-scoring game, but both defensive showed up, and uh, I think, you know, both teams have a lot of uh, pride, and they can obviously build on this moving forward for the rest of the season. Special thanks to our school ADs, uh, Jason Riddell of Gardner Edgerton, Josh Price of Olathe North. Thanks to the coaches, Chris McCartney and uh, Jesse Owen, our producer, Joe Novacek for Johnny Beck. Bethany Bowman, our entire Spectrum News broadcast crew. Kevin White saying so long from the USD 231 Activity Complex. Our final, once again, a good one. One versus two, 21-14. The home team, the homecoming team wins it at home tonight. As we say goodnight from Gardner Edgerton High School.